uh, level of reliability. And I think using the standard error of uh, measurement uh, in terms of the confidence intervals, you probably won't share that view anymore. So let's check it out. Uh, I'm calculating the standard error of measurement with uh, the formula. So it's standard deviation, 15, times the square root of 1 minus the reliability. What do we get? 15 times 0.548, which equals 8.22. So with a reliability estimate of 0 0.70 in IQ scores, based on what the test um, provides in terms of reliability, we get a standard error of measurement of 8.22, which means that if we wanted to calculate the 68 confidence, 68 percent confidence intervals for someone with an IQ score of 100, we would say that their true IQ score falls somewhere between a lower bound of 91.78 and an upper bound of 108.22. I'm simply adding the standard error measurement to the score of 100 and subtracting it as well to get the lower bound. So this is the, these are the 68% confidence intervals, uh, interval estimates uh, based on the standard error measurement. Now let's take it up to 95% confidence interval. So we need to multiply our standard error of measurement by 1.96. What do we get? 16.11. And now if I use my plus and minus, 100 plus 16.11 is equal to 116.11, and 100 minus 16.11, 83.89. So now the range in confidence has increased, uh, but we also, because we want to capture 95%, uh, with 95% confidence, the person's true IQ score. Now let's go to 99% confidence, multiplying by 2.58 to ultimately get a range between a lower bound of 75.79 and an upper bound of 121.71. So isn't that huge? With a with reliability of 0 0.70, we can say that someone who obtains an IQ score of 100, that their true IQ score is somewhere between 78.79 and 121.21. So somewhere between dull and bright. Uh, and I think this is quite convincing evidence that a reliability of 0 0.70 really isn't very impressive when we need to obtain very high levels of confidence in somebody's score. And in something like an IQ score, very often we do need very high levels of precision. Now I'm going to go through this quickly. This is for the reliability level of 0 0.80. So it's bumped up from 0.7 to 0.8. I'm going to go through it quickly just to get down to the uh, numbers of principal interest which is the 99% confidence interval. Now it's narrowed somewhat. Now we're down to 82 uh, lower bound to 117 upper bound. Still not that impressive with 99% confidence. And with 95% confidence, it's still a pretty big gap. So someone scores 100, and you can say with 95% confidence that they're IQ, their true IQ score is somewhere between 86 and 113. Still a pretty big gap. Now let's look at reliability 0 0.90. So these are the calculations. I'm just going to blitz through them. You can pause and look at the calculations if you wish. Now with 99% confidence, if someone scores 100 on a test that has reliability of 0 0.90, we end up with confidence interval between 87 and 112. So still a, still a pretty big gap. You really need reliabilities of 0.95 to really get a, a tight 95% confidence interval around a score. Let's think of, uh, let me go through some final considerations. Just because an instrument produces scores with high level of accuracy does not mean those a scores are valid. You may have heard re reliability is a necessary but not sufficient condition of validity. So just because the scores have a narrow range in terms of uh, true score accuracy does not mean that the IQ test is any good. The IQ test might be really bad, but it might still produce very reliable scores. Every time someone takes the test, they get the same score. That would be reliable, but it could be a bad, invalid score. What type of reliability estimate should one use in the SEM formula? Good question. There's no real answer to that. Uh, people tend to use, more often than not, Cronbach's Alpha. And I've got another video on Cronbach's Alpha that I'll encourage you to check out uh, if you want to understand more details about Cronbach's Alpha. Uh, 
But a lot of people might argue that you should use test-retest reliability or inter-rater reliability. Now, it depends on the circumstances of your uh, study and the circumstances of your situation. And you'll have to be able to justify that to yourself and to whoever you're actually um, uh, doing some testing for. There, I'll point out finally that the formula I used to estimate the standard error of measurement, which is really simple, standard deviation multiplied by the square root of 1 minus reliability, that only works and is only applicable to scores that correspond to the mean of that test or sample. Now we know that there's a, 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 a mean IQ score is 100, and it wasn't a coincidence that I cho chose 100. But if you want to estimate the standard error of measurement for someone who scored a score of 115, you, you need to use a different formula that is more complicated and bigger, but it's still relatively easy to use. And maybe I'll, I'll follow that up with a, a blog post, and I'll add up. I'll add a link underneath this video in the summary of this video on uh, on YouTube. I'll add a link talking about the differences between the formulas. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, and thanks for watching.